You're listening to the Joy of Champagne podcast, your guide to the world of sparkling wines. And now your host, Dennis Byram. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Joy of Champagne. I'm your host, Dennis Byram. Over the past couple of episodes, we had a chance to listen to the fascinating stories behind Champagne and Prosecco and uncovered the truths on how they came to be in this day and age. Today we'll be talking about how to enjoy them and all other sparkling wines without harming ourselves. Yes, today we're talking about sparkling safety. You might be baffled to hear this, but no, I won't be talking about how irresponsible alcohol consumption puts a burden on our livers and harms our health. But rather, I'll be highlighting the not-so-often-talked-about physical harm sparkling wines can cause. And you've guessed it, it's all about mishandling pressurized bottles of sparkling wine, resulting with projectile corks flying around like bullets. First, let's talk about some crazy facts on sparkling wines. Did you know that a bottle of champagne and other champagne method sparkling wine hold 6.2 bars of atmospheric pressure? which is three times more than the pressure in the tire of your car. This means that a champagne cork can leave a bottle at a speed up to 55 and even 60 miles per hour. And it shouldn't be tough to imagine the damage this kind of a projectile cork can cause if it ends up hitting the wrong spot, like the eye. And there are examples to cases like this. To give you an example from recent popular culture, Theo Campbell, who's one of the stars from the famed British reality TV show Love Island, very recently lost vision in one eye after an unfortunate accident caused by a projectile champagne cork while he was partying in Ibiza. And the source of the projectile cork was someone else trying to open a bottle just meters away from him. This injury has now left him blind in one eye as the impact split his eye from the middle. Yikes! Surely this is not fun to hear or to talk about, but it's at the same time fascinating to think about how this joyful and celebratory drink can cause direct physical damage, if we're not careful. It really can be indifferentiable from a loaded gun in some circumstances. Among loss of sight, medical professionals warn that cork impact in the eye can also cause hemorrhage, cataract, and even retinal damage. Though, that being said, these injuries are indeed extremely rare, but certainly not impossible as we can see. According to medical statistics, 25% of all cork-related injuries result in making the victim legally blind. If you do a quick search online, you might come across news reports of people dying from projectile cork impacts or about Death statistics of how poisonous spiders are less fatal than champagne corks, and that 25 people every year die from projectile corks. I can say comfortably that these are all false. Thankfully, there have been no reported deaths from projectile sparkling corks so far. But injuries can happen, though they might not result in serious eye injuries in every instance. According to a study done by the UK groceries giant Morrisons in 2011, over 900,000 Brits suffered from sparkling wine cork-related injuries, albeit the majority of them being very minor. If you add in the injuries caused by shattered windows, lamps, and vases shattered by projectile corks. Have I scared you off already? If you've listened this far, I hope you're not because these injuries are caused because of lack of care and sometimes downright stupidity. If you take some of the most basic precautions while opening sparkling wines, all of these injuries are easily avoidable. And then there's the issue of sabering. If you've never heard of what sabering is and how a bottle of sparkling wine is opened by sabering it, I'm afraid you have missed out so much in life, but I will fix that today. As the name suggests, sabring is done by utilizing a saber most of the times, or shall I say traditionally, but it can be done with other items as well. But how does the magic of sabring work? 
Sabring is simply a physics hack that's utilized by taking advantage of the immense pressure inside the bottle and the weak spots of the glass wine bottle. And when the right amount of pressure or the right amount of trigger is applied to those weak spots of the bottle, then the mouth of the glass bottle weakens by 50%. Hence, it starts cracking and eventually, within a millisecond, it snaps right off and flies off into the air. These weak spots of the sparkling wine bottles are simply the lip of the bottle and the very faintly visible linear seam running the entire length of the bottle. If you hit at the crossroads of these two weak points of the bottle, bam, you have just the right conditions to weaken the lip of the bottle that it will snap off by itself. Cool, isn't it? Yes, sabring might be and is cool, but at the same time, at the hands of a careless or a stupid person, it is very risky. Because the physics of sabring requires everything to be aligned perfectly. The temperature of the bottle, the seam of the bottle, to the right type of sparkling wine. When one of those is off, the recipe for a disaster is inevitable. This is also because sabring is a game of physics and not force. So the harder the impact on the mouth of the bottle, the higher the likeliness of catastrophic failure. This failure usually manifests itself as a completely shattered bottle where all the wine is lost and a high risk of hand injuries involved. There are so many ways to open a bottle of sparkling wine, from sabring with a sword, a spoon, a lighter, or the bottom of a champagne flute. I've even seen people removing corks by shooting them with rifles. There are some seriously nuts people out there, there's no doubt about that. This episode might not be the most joyous one, but it is the most essential one to ensure you do not lose your joy while enjoying your champagne. What about you? Have you had any experiences with projectile corks? Share your stories with us and we'll talk over the interesting ones on our future episodes. Thank you for listening and until next time, stay bubbly. Before we end, a word from our sponsors. This episode of the Joy of Champagne podcast was brought to you by... The Excelsior by Dupes, one of the world's finest champagne flutes. 10.7 inches tall with a 10-ounce capacity. Handcrafted and mouth-blown, lead-free crystal glass. Find out more at clubdukes.co. That's spelled C-L-U-B-D-U-X dot C-O. Because there are some things man can make better than any machine. Thanks for listening to the Joy of Champagne podcast, your guide to the world of sparkling wines. We hope you join us on the next episode. In the meantime, feel free to visit us at joyofchampagne.com or drop us an email at hello at joyofchampagne.com.